Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Beatty and today I am pitching my business which is Coastal Dance and Event Center. So before we begin, quick question, who here has celebrated something the past three years? All right? Who here has tried to throw a party here in Armstrong County? And who here has been a little surprised when you got your invoice back at the price? <laughs> so that essentially is a problem that I'm solving here in the community. We currently have a lock of contemporary, aesthetically pleasing, but budget-friendly venue spaces. And here in Onto County, our median age is 26, and half of our population is under that age of 40. So that is my target demographic, which means that they're celebrating a lot of major life milestones right now. And then additionally, with the dance side, um, I'm a working mom, and I used to be a dancer, and there are no classes right now that I can realistically attend working eight to five, as well as I'd be the only minority-owned business owner with a dance studio within a 30-mile radius. So uh, my solution is being a one-stop shop. I'm going to provide a basic package that is competitive in terms of pricing um, with the ability to add on the more that you want to make your experience. And my ideal location is being in Piney Green and Hubert. There is a lot of area for opportunity with po population growth, with new housing developments coming, and just new businesses that are being built right now. Um, my space I've picked out is a new retail space that's right next to White Oak High School. So I hope to be one of the first residents there. And then a little bit about me, about why I'm qualified. So I have been dancing since I was 18 months old. I graduated from UNC Charlotte with a minor in dance, and I've been teaching since I was 15. And on the business side, I currently work for Grand Canyon University as a military recruiter, but I also do a lot of B2B networking and event planning, as well as marketing and sales in that sense. And so I have that experience I'm able to use with this job. So when I take my artistic plus my personal professional life, it makes me a good fit. And I worked for Disney and Carnival Cruise Line, so I'm very big about guest service, making that magical experience, for lack of a better term, here for my events. And then my team is myself as the owner and artistic director. My husband is a retail salary manager, so he'll be on the operations side. And immediately um, in the next year, we're looking to bring three new jobs to Onzo County. First thing is going to be another full-time dance instructor, and then two assistants for both sides of the house to make sure we're fully covering our bases. And then, like I said, my demographic is myself. So three years ago, I got engaged. Two years ago, I got married. And last year, I had a baby. So with all of that, I celebrate a lot of things. So I'm really looking to service that 18 to 40 year old young family that might not have a ton of money to invest $10,000 for a birthday party, but they want to have somewhere nice. It's not necessarily at their house. Um, people can come, and they have that cute Instagram-worthy uh, item like I have over here. Um, and then for the dance classes, it's going to be kids and also young adults as well who are still looking to take legitimate dance classes. That's not necessarily Silver Snake or Zumba. Um, also with that, my marketing strategy is going to be referrals and social media. The more clients I have, the more I can showcase different things we've done in this space so that you're really able to visualize what we do. And then from the dance side of things, I do a lot with the kids in the community already, so I'm able to build that pipeline and then show like, hey, if you like me as what I'm doing here, I also offer dance classes and I've talked to a lot of people in the area that are like, are you starting right now? And I was like, I'm working on it. So already starting to work on that, so I'm ready to go. And then as I included for the judges, here's an example of my basic package. So this is what I base my financial numbers off of. So as you can see, that's what it'd come with if you were rent with me. And realistically, this is just events for up to 30 people. So I need a 2,000 square foot building to start off. And then my revenue is going to come from building out my schedule for a month. My break even point is at least six events per month. And then from the dance side of things, it's gonna come from monthly tuition, merchandise, and I'm having an internal vending machine for sales. And then this is an example of things you can add on. So when I say basic, that was the last slide, but these are things I'm gonna offer, such as this is a miniature format. So I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. I do already have a nine foot balloon arch um, that I can add on to packages. And then this is an example of my pricing structure for the dance studio. And when I made my first year numbers, it's based off just event space. So in 2024, we're projecting to make even more, which was in my big business plan. But this is just, if I book six events every month, how much we're gonna make. And then in 2024, we're starting to add more events, adding dance classes in quarter three. So yeah, and then here is what I will need to get started, $11,712. And I broke everything down for you guys. So. 
For the event space, about $3,700 to get all the hard equipment, but I'll be renting these things out as it goes along. Same with the dance studio, which I'll also rent out for groups who need practice spaces. I did have someone mention that to me um, who'd be interested, and then getting my general office set up and my utilities and when it starts to get your first month going off. And yeah, so my growth plan, like I said, first start off with the event. As soon as I can get in the space and have it ready to go, immediately open for business. Next summer, start offering adult dance classes, building into offering the kids starting next school year. And then eventually, I'd like to move into a bigger space in 2025 and add on more party rental services, like a bounce house. And here's some of my partners, so the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm already on the Business Diversity Council, and I've made a lot of good connections there, but now being a part of the small business one as well. The Community College, specifically Miss April, um, Marine Federal, and then some of my personal people I've worked with, as well as my LinkedIn community and uh, nonprofit organizations. And that's pretty much it, so any questions? <laughs> Well, with your um, dance classes, do you plan to do any like recitals to showcase what you've taught? Yes. So we'll definitely do at least one annual recital. I'd like to have another um, one in the fall. So because with it being a transient community, you want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to perform. And then I also really like doing give backs, like going to the nursing homes. I did that growing up, performing for others, um, as well as like little festivals here and there around town. Um, congratulations on all your recent milestones and, uh, and, and I think you've certainly identified a need in this area. Um, your business plan, I enjoyed reading it and thought it was very well thought out um, from the price structure uh, on down. <clears throat> as, you, as you grow, you're going to start with kind of the rental space yeah. um, and then you look to incorporate the dance classes and so forth. Um, I'm sure I see you identify that there's going to be a need for a dance instructor. Yes. Um, but how do you deconflict potentially before? Because it looks like in year two that's kind of happening before you move into that larger space. You deconflict those those meetings or those birthday parties and the dance classes and. Um, I presume it's just a logistics thing, but yes. what's your thoughts on that? So that's why I'm hiring two people. So that way it's not getting confusing um, when you're booking it. So when I've written it out, the dan event space, it's going to be two different rooms. It's only open at these times, wrapping up with the last one being done by four. That's when the little kids get out of class and the working moms, like I said. So then they're going to just be in the afternoon. And then on the weekends, that's going to be all event space, except for I will have ballroom classes on Sundays. So that's the only time where there might be two different things going on at the same time. Um, but other than that, it's really going to be separate. It's just, here's the space. How do you want to use it, except for the set classes? Because obviously, I know when those are going to be. Awesome. Um, you know, with um, the amount of people that would be that would be coming through there, whether it's the six events, I, I think you mentioned the break even, or up to 30 students in a class. Um, have you thought about any liability around if anything were to happen while while you were conducting those or you know how you're going to offset that risk are you going to self-insure what's the cost to purchase um you know liability insurance um how does that figure into your financials and how do you plan on meeting those needs so i'll definitely use insurance um i have never had an injury um, whenever I've taught anything I've done, but you do have that risk, you know, when you're working with kids and then you have, you know, someone at a party might have a little bit too much fun. Um, so definitely doing the outside insurance and I have talked to State Farm, so I want to be like in a legitimate plan. Um, and they said as long as I'm gymnastics, they'll be able to cover me and I think they said it's going to be around $1,500 for that insurance. Annually? Yeah. Okay. And you said that's without gymnastics? Yeah, no gymnastics. Okay. I'm not doing gymnastics. Right. <laughs> that puts you at a different like insurance level because you have had speed and apparatuses sure. um, but yeah that's what that's going to be so definitely insurance 100% okay awesome back to the recitals have you thought about using the recitals as a fundraiser to offer a scholarship to your student no I haven't that's a really good idea uh, <laughs> so yeah that, I, there's a couple little things like that like I know specifically like I want to do a dance for deployed parents because normally you have daddy daughter dances mm -hmm. but obviously we have a little bit different um not kind of get emotional but that's like yeah. something it's really strong and important to me but I do want to do a give back so when I first started teaching I actually used to teach for free free classes to girls like that so didn't think about doing a fundraiser yeah you can use the recital as a fundraiser to raise money as a scholarship for your dance students and I definitely would go around to my network and you know, ask people support because you have everyone should have access to the type of um, opportunities I was afforded in life is my opinion and arts are important we need to bring arts to Onslow County as well <laughs> 
What uh, you mentioned your experience with Disney. What's one thing that you learned there that you'd apply um, in this initiative? Hard work and working with a smile at all costs. Because <laughs> I have like five seconds to go. So, <laughs> yes, I have like two seconds, but I can talk to you more about that later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much.